Hi everyone, my name is Ellen Goldsmith. I'm a licensed acupuncturist, teacher of Chinese medicine, and author of the book, Nutritional Healing with Chinese Medicine, with 175 seasonal recipes for you to achieve optimal health. I'm back with you today to talk about recovering from illness and what to eat. How to eat when recovering from illness. Let's get started. Today I wanna to talk to you about three different things that can help with your recovery. One is what foods not to eat. The second is what foods can help you. And the third is a simple congee or rice porridge recipe that I'm gonna show you to help with healing. So recovering from illness or surgery takes time. That's the first thing you need to know. It's not a straight road to wellness. And usually with surgeons and doctors, they may underestimate your recovery. So you have to learn to listen to your body and know that it's not a straight and narrow path to recovery. You may be recovered of most of the symptoms. Your wounds may be healed, but you may be tired. You may have some pain. You may just not quite feel like your normal self that you wanna get back to. But if you know that it takes time, and if you know what to do, you can be really proactive in, uh, in helping yourself get to a place where you feel really good. So what does it take? First of all, there are two major things your body needs. It needs to rest. Healing takes a tremendous amount of energy. And that's where all of your energy is going. It can't be going to running errands and taking care of the house and doing your job full on out. Your, your energy needs to go inward so you can heal. So you need to rest. Secondly, you need good fuel because that fuel is going to fuel your recovery. You need whole foods, fresh foods, you need protein, and you usually need more protein than you would usually have in a day because as your tissues need to repair, those proteins, those amino acids and enzymes are really helpful in doing that. And thirdly, I can't stress enough, dark leafy greens filled with chlorophyll, fiber helps you to uh, clear out your system. So again, your body needs rest and your digestive system also needs rest. The nourishment we, we receive is only as good as the food we digest. And the immune system, 80% of it resides in the gut. So let's see what it takes. First of all, you have to avoid those foods that are gonna stress your body and do not benefit healing like greasy and, and uh, fatty foods, spicy foods aggravate inflammation, sugar refined carbohydrates boost your energy way up and then let you crash and are really hard on your blood sugar levels and your uh, adrenals, etc. Artificial sweeteners and preservatives just don't really have much in them for you and they just make you crave more and more food. Prepackaged and processed foods you know, you probably get, could get some good quality frozen foods, but they just don't have a lot of what we call in Chinese medicine, qi or vitality in them. So I would really err on staying away from those foods. And then also alcohol and caffeine, it congests your liver, it aggravates your sympathetic nervous system that puts you in a kind of stress state. So you wanna really stay away from that while you're healing. So what to do? You want to create an optimal environment for healing. You need a support system. You need people to help you because you can't do it all on your own because you don't have your optimal energy. So things like shopping, food prep are just key. And you'd be surprised how many people want to help you. If you have friends, I, I suggest uh, setting up something either on lots of helping hands or caring bridge uh, to create some kind of food train where your friends can sign up and bring you food. You tell them what you need and want, and they can bring it to you. And that way, you are just in a better, in better shape. You don't have to work so hard at nourishing yourself. You want to make sure that you have a place you can rest where that's quiet and calm, maybe dark so you're not having a lot of noise or, or light coming in when you really need to sleep. You need to stay hydrated. Your tissues, your body fluids are necessary to transport what's needed in your body to heal it. So 
making sure you have access to water, herbal, and green teas, and have foods on hand that you can prepare or reheat easily. So having chopped up vegetables in the fridge or, or pre preparing some stews or soups or congee or things that you can just pull out and, and put on the stove and heat up will make your life a whole bunch easier. So some of the foods and herbs that you want to have on hand, um, and I suggest these foods because they have really strong healing properties. Any kind of rice, whole grain, brown, sweet brown rice, long grain, basmati, sushi, or bar arborio. You can put rice in soups, you can put rice in stews, you can cook it soft, you can add vegetables to it. It's just a good foundation for you. It's good for your stomach. It's not going to aggravate you if you have IBS. I'm going to talk to you about Job's Tears or Hatamugi. It's a, and we'll talk about that in the next few slides. Seaweeds, I love seaweeds and I'm going to talk to you about that as well. Cinnamon, these herbs, these Common kitchen spices and herbs are really beneficial and therapeutic. Cinnamon is warming, it, um, it has a sweet and pungent taste, you can put them in teas, you can put them in rice and bring some fragrance to a very simple dish. Rosemary is high in antioxidants, it also has antimicrobial properties, it's good for the brain, it's good for the heart. Oregano too is very strong in its antimicrobial, antibacterial um, effect on the body and that's in the kind of the more the Italian and, and Mediterranean um, cuisine. Thyme is actually a very common uh, tea that you use in Europe. It's good for digestion and for the lungs. Basil, which most of us know in pesto, is a beautiful herb that can um, benefit uh, our digestion. It's a lovely tea that you can make in summer. Cardamom is a common spice found in more Middle Eastern cooking. You see it also in chai tea, Indian cooking. It, it's very good for digestion and, and helps to keep your digestion functioning well. Aniseeds are one of my go-to uh, spices to or herbs to have on hand. I add that about a teaspoon into a cup of hot water with some honey and it's great for like the end of a cold if you're just trying to get some mucus up and out. And also it's delicious. Green tea is filled with um, um, beneficial antioxidant properties. It's also got a little bit of caffeine, so it's a good substitute for coffee. Chrysanthemum flower is a lovely herb that we use in Chinese medicine that is very uh, calming, clears some heat, it's good for the eyes. Peppermint tea also really good for the digestion. Um, ginger and garlic are, of course, are something we use uh, commonly. Ginger is very good, like an anti-nausea herb. You can put that in some hot water with lemon and honey, or you can use it in your cooking or in soups. Garlic, of course, is a very old herb that's been used for thousands upon thousands of years and has a property uh, in it called allicin, which is used a lot in um, antibacterial use. But some people are sensitive to garlic, so if you have IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, or digestive issues, uh, where you have a lot of bloating and burping, I would stay away from garlic or just keep it at a minimum. Again, dark leafy greens, I can't say enough about them. And if you don't have them in your diet, get them there. Just try one new green a week and put it in. Boil it, steam it, saute it, even bake it with a little oil. You can get those lovely and delicious kale chips. Almonds and walnuts are, are really a nice, um, nice nuts. Uh, almonds are good for the lung. You can also put those in tea. You can mix them in grains. Of course, you can use almond flour and bake with it. Uh, walnuts are what we call in Chinese medicine a yang tonic. They're very warming and they're good to build energy. And you can mix that with, you can see at the bottom, the goji berries and astragalus, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Job's Tears. This is just one of my favorite unusual grains. It's delicious. It's got a slightly nutty flavor. Um, and it's incredibly beneficial in Chinese medicine. We use it a lot for when people are just, their energy is down or they have a tendency to kind of hold water. It, it's almost like a diuretic. It gets rid of a lot of dampness, and, um, but it also tonifies or it's like a tonic for the body. Today we're gonna add it into our kanji, but you can also put it into soups and medicinal teas. And you can get these at Asian grocery stores 
for herbal companies. Seaweeds um, are a common food used in most coastal cultures from Asia to Europe to Mexico and South America. And they're salty, they have a slightly fishy taste, but they add a depth of flavor that can't be matched. Kombu is um, a source of glutamate and it gives a lot of umami to flavor. So you can put kombu in hot water and um, let it cook for a while, take the kombu out and then make a vegetable or chicken stock, fish stock, and it just gives it a lot of depth of flavor. It's also great for cooking with beans. Nori is used as wrapping for sushi. You can see it in the lower right hand corner and has a high level of protein. Dulse um, is really, I love it. It's, it's got a kind of um, very salty, uh, full flavor and very high in iron. You can just eat it raw. It's easy to break down. You can soak it in a little bit of water and put it in a salad or put it in a soup. And arame is very mild also in flavor and really nice sauteed with some vegetables. Astragalus root is just one of those superior Chinese medicinal herbs um, that we use and it's used widely in teas to build energy. It benefits the heart and the lungs. It lifts up your energy. So it kind of gives you an energy boost. But if you have hypertension, you want to not really utilize astragalus too much. There are other herbs that you can use like American ginseng or ashwagandha. Um, and it's best to use when there are no symptoms of illness. If you've got phlegm and a cough, you don't want to have a tonic herb like astragalus. We say it locks the thief in the house. You want to do it when those mucus symptoms are gone and you're just your energy slow and you need to have an energy boost. You can add it to broth, soups, make a nice tea out of it as well. And goji berries, these are really popular now. Uh, you can get them a lot of places and grocery stores, natural food stores. Um, that concentrated sweet flavor makes them very appealing to kids and people of all ages. Uh, we like in our household to mix it with a, a little bit of nut. Sometimes a if, I'm, if it's summer and it's hot out, I'll make a smoothie and I'll, I'll put it in there. They, um, it's a very therapeutic food, so you don't want to overdo it. It's a food that benefits the eyes, it nourishes the blood, and it's a chi tonic as well. So today I'm going to be showing you in the next um, slide, we're going to be having a video on how to make kanji with sweet brown rice and Job's tears. So sweet brown rice is really lovely because it, um, it's, got, it's a, something we make mochi from. So it's, it's kind of richer in its flavor. It's a little bit warming. And then the texture of the Job's Tears is slightly nutty. And it just adds a nice texture to it. So why kanji? Kanji is known as um, um, a porridge, very traditional food used in, in China for breakfast. Uh, but it can be adapted for all kinds of people. And the beauty of it is, is that you're using a little bit of grain to a lot of water and you're cooking it slowly. So those grains are just completely hydrated and you have this kind of warm and liquid-like uh, dish that you eat and it brings a tremendous amount of hydration into your body, which is really good for your tissues and your cells. So it's used a lot with people when they're convalescing. It's used a lot for people, elderly people who may not have much of an appetite. Um, and the beautiful thing is that because it's a very bland and neutral kind of dish, is that you can adapt it in myriad ways. You can um, cook it with a vegetable stock or a meat stock or a fish stock. You can cook it with some beans. You can cook it with some fish. You can add in hard boiled egg. You can add in vegetables to it. Or you can just make it plain and then make it either a savory dish by adding in leftovers from the night before or making a more sweet and kind of energy boosting dish with a little bit of butter or ghee and honey. And we'll look at that in the next slide. So today I want to just make a simple kanji, which is really great when you're recovering from an illness. Easy to digest, nourishing. First I'm going to take some short grain uh, sweet brown rice. You can use arborio rice, you can use millet, 
you can use whatever rice you have. But I like sweet brown rice because it's a little bit more, mm, it's what they use for sticky rice, so it has more body to it. I'm also adding in a little bit what we call Hatomugi or Job's Tears. You can get these at Asian grocery stores or herbal companies. And in Chinese medicine, we use this for helping to, what we say, drain the damp. So it helps to fortify spleen and, and stomach, which is really important for digestion. So I'm going to add that in. So I've added a half a cup of rice, uh, just about an eighth of a cup or a quarter of a cup of um, Hatomugi. And then I'm adding in four cups of water. And I had already heated up the pan, so you heard that little noise there. And we're really, it's kind of like a rice soup. I'm going to add just about a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. Just stir it around, can you see? And really, we're going to cook this for about two hours. I'm going to see you in two hours. And this is going to become a lovely um, rice porridge. Just fantastic for the elderly, recovering from illness, low appetite. You don't have to use water. You can use chicken broth, lamb broth, fish broth, vegetable stock. And you'll see afterwards the many different ways that we can um, adapt it to make it a really nice, easy to digest meal. Great when you're recovering from an illness. Okay, so here we go. The kanji is now cooked. And we've cooked it for two hours. And you can see, you see the rice, but you see it's really like a soup. They say in the ancient text that kanji should be indivisible and there's actually nothing as sweet and wonderful as kanji. Everyone has their opinion. But nevertheless, if you're recovering from being sick or you're feeling tired and run down or you just don't have a lot of appetite and you want something easy to digest, kanji is a great solution. So here we're going to put it in the bowl here. And then what you can see on this board is I have a number of different condiments. And these are just some simple ones. You could have a big bowl of kanji and add in some, some meat and vegetables and leftovers from last night. You can add fish, you can add pickles. But when you're recovering from an illness and you don't have much appetite, you may want something as simple as butter and honey. Butter and honey builds the chi, it nourishes the, the jing or the, uh, the essence and it's quite delicious. So if you want a kind of sweet and simple kanji, that's a way to go. If you're looking for a kind of more nutty and a little bit more fat, you can use either uh, walnuts, which we say our young tonic law of signature says that it's very good for the kidneys. Um, or you can use almonds, which are good for the lungs and help lubricate and help and aid in cough. Just like you make oatmeal, you can add either walnuts and almonds or together and you can use some goji berries, um, which are very good for the essence. They nourish the eyes. Now, if you want to go a little bit more savory, you can put the walnuts together with Chinese chives, which together become what we say in Chinese medicine, a yang tonic, meaning that it warms the body and goes to the kidney. And you can even add a little bit of, um, uh, this is a furikake I made with uh, nori, hemp seed, um, some fish flakes and salt and that can be put on as well just you could see just like a little it makes it pretty you know here I'm going for a little bit more savory a little bit chives and you can have a lovely kind of snack or meal and then over here you have I have some turnip greens which are really high in calcium and an egg so you can put in a hard-boiled egg or a poached egg or a fried egg on top Again, making a very nice meal. And that's a simple way to have kanji after you're recovering from illness. So in closing, I want you to remember one thing, that to heal takes time. It means your body needs to rest. It means your body needs good fuel, whole foods, good protein, a little bit more than usual, dark leafy greens. Your body needs to rest. Listen to it. It's not a straight road. One day you might feel great, you might just feel normal, and then you overdo it and the next day you crash. That too is normal. And that's your body saying, not quite yet. And finally, your digestive system needs to be tended to. It needs to function well because that's where your immunity resides, in your gut. So I hope that 
Today, you take away something from this that you can utilize in your life. And the next time that you're not feeling well or that you're looking to heal, there are some things that you can do. So in closing, as the Chinese say, yao, eat your medicine, use your food in the kitchen where it matters most every single day. Thanks so much. And if you want to get my book, it's available online at Firefly Books, Barnes & Noble, Amazon, or your local independent bookstore, and in many places, the public library. You can reach me at lng at pearlnaturalhealth.com. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Facebook at Nutritional Healing with Chinese Medicine, uh, Instagram, Goldsmith Ellen, or Twitter at Goldsmith underscore Ellen. Thank you so much.